C234, Workforce Planning, Recruitment, and Selection. Let's talk about it. Dear me, three to six months, watch how I make you proud. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier, where I share my journey in tech, both on the career side and on the education and learning side. I am a recent WGU graduate. I actually accelerated through the program with the help of my enrollment counselor, my program mentor, and really just my desire to get done with school. I started on November 1st, 2022, and completed my last course on February 16th, 2023. And in today's video, I want to share with you the tips and tricks that I use in order to pass this course in particular. Today, we'll talk about what is workforce planning, recruitment and selection? How does it relate to IT? What are the course requirements? What materials are there? And yeah, how do you pass it? So let's go ahead and get started. So what is workforce planning and what is recruitment versus selection? Well, simply put, recruitment is just how you attract candidates and selection is interviewing people. Now, how does this relate to IT management? In IT, you want to have really well qualified candidates coming to you, number one, and you want to have a process by which you can interview and get the right fit for your organization. And this can be a number of different ways. You can do panel interviews, you can do one on one interviews, there's all kinds of things you can do. But ultimately, in IT in particular, because information is something that's always trying to get exploited because technical skills and assisting users with technical issues is what helps drive the business and what helps keep the business flowing. You want to make sure you're recruiting the right people for the job. And with all that covered, let's go to the student portal and look at the course. Okay. So here we are at the course homepage. This course is a three unit course. And it's broken out into really three different assignments. You have the objective assessment, you have the performance assessment, and then that performance assessment is broken out into two separate tasks. Now here on the course page, what you'll find is the name of the course up top. You can see the course start date and down below, you'll see when you started the course and then also when you completed the course. And then you'll see here we have course material, it has the course planning tool and the textbook. You have assessments that shows the pre-assessment and objective assessment, as well as the performance assessment. And then you also have the instructor announcement, course tips, course search, course chatter. Now we're going to look at the resources because these resources are going to be extremely helpful once you get going with the course. So you're going to click on announcements and you're going to see this link that says more, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring you to a page like this. Now I'm going to click this link and it's going to take me over to a Salesforce page, which I want to show you just briefly so you can see what kind of material is there. And here we can see the course materials or the course resource page. These are the main sections that are here, but as you can see, there are success tips, task two, then task one. We'll talk about that order. They have resources for the objective assessment, course overview. They have a pacing guide some FAQs and just quite a few different resources here. Next, let's look at the course material. You can access this course material uh, by clicking on start learning. You can click on the drop down here to review the different topics. You can also click on the links here as well. And then lastly, you can access the assessments, your progress and other materials by clicking on one of these items here. The first thing that we're going to tackle is going to be the performance assessment. And WGU recommends that you start with the performance assessment first. And I agree with that because performance assessments take a little while to grade and that will also help serve as a prep for the objective assessment. And for the sake of this example, I'm going to look at task one, although task two is going to be very similar. We're going to just look at this one to show you basically what you can expect. All right. Now I realize I have quite a bit redacted. That's just because I can't share all these things with you, but what I will tell you is that on the top on this first block of gray text or gray shape behind it is the name of the task and just the code for the task. 
Then you have task overview, submissions, evaluation report, the competencies that will be focused on. And then below the competencies, you'll see an introduction. The introduction gives you some context about the state or pace of the workforce. And then you'll see a scenario. And that scenario is what you're going to utilize in order to answer questions related to the task. The second tab we're at is the submissions tab. You'll have a page like this and you'll be able to drag and drop or upload your Word document containing the template. And then you'll have the similarity score tracker. And what it does is it tracks essentially how close your work is to someone else's work. By the way, do not plagiarize. It doesn't help you whatsoever. But when you submit this, it's hard to not have something here in the similarity score. And the reason that is, is because everyone is submitting a template. And in that template, there are the same types of questions that are being asked. And you normally are required to keep those questions on the document that you submit. So naturally, you may have a fifth of your paper that looks similar to someone else's, but it doesn't mean that you plagiarized. When you submit this, even though you can't see it behind me, on the bottom right corner, there's a save and a submit button. Click save, allow the similarity score to run just to see if there's any crossover or any similarities between you and other students. And that way you can make changes and you can update things and just ensure that nothing's going to hold you back from getting the grade. Now, as you can see here, I submitted this on November 21st. It went to the queue, went to evaluation, and less than two days later at 12.03, we have the evaluation completed. The next thing I wanna show you is the evaluation report. So here on the evaluation report, you'll get the feedback if you passed or didn't pass, right? It'll say either passed or revision needed, I believe. And then you'll have notes from the evaluator, what they saw on the paper. And then on the right side, if you could see above my head here, I have a couple examples of what competent looks like. So to the left of all this will be some of the things or requirements that you have to respond to in the scenario and each one will be listed. So item A1, item A2, B1, B2, all that will be on the left side. And those are all different things you have to respond to in order to pass the task. The good thing is that because you're submitting a template, you can just change section G, make some changes, resubmit it. If everything else is still the same, they look at the evaluation notes from the previous submission and they'll just focus in on the areas that still require some attention. And one quick reminder, when you're going through the tasks, they want you to start with task two. That's the suggestion. So start with task two and then go to task one. If we click on task two, you'll see all the various links and items that they provide for you to be successful. These two things on the bottom, these are attachments that come as part of the scenario. So in order for you to answer the questions correctly in the template, it'll say refer back to exhibit four or refer back to the job description document so that you can answer the correct way. And once you do that, then you can move on to task number one. And I would do both of these tasks before you get to the objective assessment, just so that they're in the queue and they're being graded. Now it's time to prepare for the objective assessment. And the way I do this, I usually take a five-step approach. You can cherry pick what you like out of this approach. You don't have to do all five steps, especially since you're doing the performance assessment ahead of time. You're going to learn a lot or be exposed to a lot of concepts that you're going to have to demonstrate knowledge of. And by writing all that stuff out, it'll definitely reinforce your knowledge. The first thing I like to do is take the course planning tool. This is a very high level kind of mini pre-assessment. And it asks you maybe at the most six or seven questions. And with each question, they also ask, you know, how familiar are you with that concept? And it'll give you a little scoring report at the end. You can review it and see how you did. Next thing I would do is go straight to the pre-assessment. And so you're going to come straight here, take the exam and to see how you do. Now, when you take the pre-assessment, you're going to generate a report depending on how well you did. So if you click on pre-assessment report, we're going to see exactly how I did this first go around. So first off, you can click on using this report just to get an idea of what these colors represent. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is the weight of each of these competency areas. So you have employee relations taking up the majority of this. So if you understand this or you can get exemplary in this area, 
that means that that score should carry you pretty far for these other two. Now you still have to execute in these other areas, but then I would focus my attention on the next highest component of the test, which is recruitment. And then I would focus on the last area, which is a selection. So step three is to go into the course material. So we're going to launch the course and I'm going to share with you the way that I approach this because personally, I was trying to accelerate. I already do a lot of reading and reviewing stuff at work and I want to do as little reading as I possibly could. So what I do is something called priming uh, and I do this to get my mind focused on what are the learning objectives and things like that. And the way I do this is I just simply use the table of contents. So for example, here we can see that the first level shows essentially 10 topics. We have workforce planning, recruitment, talent, internal recruiting, all the way down to employment laws. So what I generally do with this section is I just look at these top level titles and just try to anticipate and think about or ask myself questions about what it is that is contained in this text. And so for example, if I see topic three, internal recruiting, hmm. So you mean to tell me that there's a process for internal, internal recruiting, meaning someone already has a job in the organization and now someone is trying to target that, that talent. Interesting. So I can look at that and think about it. And then once I do some thinking, now I can expand on it. And then I can look at all of the subtopics that flow underneath it. Now, the other thing I want to mention too, is if you're going or you're attending study.com or Sophia prior to joining WGU. And if you're not familiar with those schools, I'll put a link above where you can watch my video. That process of transferring those credits over also helped me learn a lot about HR. And so you're going to have a lot of prior knowledge when you come in here. So this is my process here. And in step four, what I do is if this is not enough for me and I didn't do as well in the pre-assessment, maybe I need more exposure to how the questions are worded because that's generally at the heart of it. You see this big block of text it scares you or you're like, I don't want to answer this. And so you skip right over things or you make snap decisions without really reading. And so because of that, I like to get exposed to different test questions. So we did the pre-assessment once. Now in the course, you can access assessments here as well. So I'm going to quickly jump to this page and I'm going to show you what to start with and what to look for. So here you have topic section questions. These are knowledge check questions. And what a knowledge check is essentially, you'll see a block of like a block of text. So it'd be a paragraph that you had to read, give you some context. And immediately they want to check your understanding at that stage of reading. So it's a really cool way of approaching things. Some things are explicitly laid out. Some things are more like inferred or they're building on or priming you for the next topic. For example, workforce planning, there'll be a knowledge check for everything above this knowledge check. There'll be like all the paragraphs that you reviewed or read. And then there may be a last or final statement that segues into the purpose of stages of workforce planning. Now, in addition to that, what I would also point out is that if you go down, you have these end of topic reviews. I would actually start with these questions first because this is more of like a cumulative kind of approach. And if you want to go one step above that, you could do the final prep assessment, which will take you to a final assessment in the text. And that final assessment will evaluate your full understanding of everything. And these quizzes and tests and knowledge questions usually come in three versions. And each version has a slightly different set of questions, but the number of questions are the same. So it'll be like a total of nine questions. And my goal when I take these is to score anywhere between 90 and 100%, just go over them until I feel comfortable. Now, the other trick that I want to mention is that when you take your pre-assessment, as long as you felt good about the areas that you did well in, when you look at the questions and go back through that report, then you can skip having to go through all of these. And let's just say topic nine is the one where you really got stuck on. Just focus all your efforts on topic nine. Don't spend your time reading the whole textbook. Unless, of course, you're trying to work in HR, but for the most part, if you focus in on a particular area that you actually need to focus on in order to pass, then that's what you do. And once you completed this, then we're going to go back to the pre-assessment and let's jump back on over there. 
And now that you've primed your brain, you've gone through all these steps to just understand the materials, you submitted your performance assessment, you've done all that, while these are being graded, so while these guys are being graded down here, it's time for you to take this pre-assessment once more and just see if you pass. If you do pass, I would immediately jump into the objective assessment. I would try to schedule it the same day, within the hour, just something. I would try to schedule that as soon as possible because you know that number one is only 34 questions, but number two, you're ready. Don't wait, don't be too insecure. And if you fail, you just retake it. It's really that simple. All right, so that wraps up this video. I wanna thank you first for checking this out, for hanging around this long. I know it's a lot of information, but this kind of direction is what I wish I would have had so I could have finished even sooner. <laughs> My goal was to finish within two months and uh, that didn't happen. But nonetheless, hopefully this helps you as you try to accelerate through WGU. So with that said, good luck to you in this course, wherever you're at in your stage of progression. <laughs> and let me know what you think. Let me know how this worked for you. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier. And remember, don't be hard on yourself. Just work hard on yourself. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud.